We're definitely getting some really impressive performance out of Forza Horizon 5 on this mini PC, and every time I test it on integrated graphics, I still get surprised by how well it runs. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Nookbox 9 from GMK Tech. Now in 2022, GMK Tech released a lot of mini PCs. Some of them were powered by low-end Intel chips, some of them were powered by Intel chips with Tiger Lake, and we also got some 3000 series Ryzen chip mini PCs from GMK Tech. But in 2023, they jumped right over to 5000 series, and with this one here, we've actually got a 6-core 12-thread Ryzen 5 5600U. So yeah, what we have here is a pretty powerful little mini PC powered by a Ryzen 5 5600U. It does have full function USB Type-C up front. It's 3.2, so it will support display out. Inside of the box, obviously, we're going to get the mini PC itself, the Nook Box 9. We also get a 65 watt power supply, and this isn't powered by USB Type-C, but keep in mind, this can be powered by USB-C. And it will function in alt mode, which means if you do have a monitor that supports USB Type-C video in and power out, you can just use one cable to get this up and running. Checking out the I.O. up front here, we've got two full-size USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, USB Type-C 3.2, and the 3.5mm audio jack. Moving around to the sides, not much going on over here on the left-hand side, but over on the right, we do have a micro SD card slot, which would be great for adding a little bit of storage to this mini PC. And finally, around back here, we've got our power input, two full-size HDMI ports, and these will support 4K 60 out, so in total, we can do three displays with this tiny PC. Both of these HDMI ports and the USB Type-C up front. We've also got two USB 2.0 ports and 2.5 gigabit Ethernet around back here. So when it comes to the specs of the Nookbox 9, for the CPU, or the APU rather, we've got the AMD Ryzen 5 5600U. This is actually one of my favorite 5000 mobile chips, the 5600 and the 5625U. Really great performer. We've got 6 cores, 12 threads, a base clock of 2.3 GHz, and a boost up to 4.2. And as long as we can throw enough wattage at this and keep it cool enough, it's a great performer. I'd say around 30 watts, and luckily, this has a boost up to 35 right out of the box. For the GPU, we've got the Radeon Vega 7 iGPU at 1800 MHz. This does have 16GB of DDR4 running in dual channel at 3200 MHz, but we can add up to 64GB of RAM with this unit. It's got a 512GB M.2 SSD, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and it's running Windows 11 Pro. I've had a little while to mess around with the Nook Box 9, and like I mentioned, we do have a boost up to 35 watts, so we've got really great performance out of this 5600U. For everyday tasks, it's definitely going to get you through it. Email checking, web browsing, 4K video playback, document editing, even some light photo editing is totally possible on this little mini PC. And with Wi-Fi 6 or the addition of 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, loading up web pages is really snappy here. Just headed over to their website, and as you can see, we've got a lot of images, and they load up like that. I mean, really quick when it comes to web browsing. And the 5600U, or basically any of the 5000 series Ryzen chips, handles 4K 60fps video playback like a champ. Whether you want to stream from YouTube or your favorite app, or even playing it natively from an external hard drive, a NAS, or even the internal SSD on this unit. And real quick, I wanted to give you a little bit of 4K video playback here. This is uh, one of my go-tos, Big Buck Bunny, we're at 4K 60. And by the end of this video, we did have 16 drop frames, which is a little more than I'm normally used to, but I have been dealing with uh, some internet issues at the house. Even if I was on Ethernet, I was still getting those drop frames, even on my main PC. So it's really not that bad, and this is something I'd never notice if I didn't have that frame counter on. Next thing I wanted to take a look at were some benchmarks, and first up, we've got Geekbench 5, single core, 1368, multi, 6159. We actually got much higher on that multi than I thought we would, given that we only have 6 cores and 12 threads here. With 3D Mark Night Raid, we got a 14,323, and the final one I ran here was Fire Strike with a 3,524. So these really aren't that bad given the form factor and power consumption of this little PC, but now I want to test out some PC games and see how this thing really performs. So the first game we have here is Genshin Impact 1080p medium settings and it's doing a great job. I did see it dip down to around 58 every once in a while. I think that's kind of shaders caching in the background. 
but in the last few months they have been doing some really nice little updates to this game at least when it comes to performance on windows and on these ryzen chips you should get some great performance mk11 i mean it's so impressive how well this game runs on lower end hardware we're at 1080p with a medium low mix now on the 5600h at a higher wattage we can actually run this at full medium settings 1080p but there were a few that i had to turn down to low but either way you look at it, this game is fully playable on the 5600U. Here's Forza Horizon 5 at 900p with a low medium mix, and this will run at 1080p, all low settings. You can get an average of around 65, but I wanted to see what we could do with it, and at 900p, low medium, we can get an average of 71 FPS out of this game. Pretty impressive, but it's another one of those games that's very well optimized. Next on the list, we've got Doom Eternal 720p low settings with dynamic resolution scale turned on. So I was really hoping we could get a constant 60 out of this, and with dynamic resolution scale, I usually set you know the frame limit to around 64, so it will scale it down a bit, but even with it set up like this, you can see that we are dipping under 60. I'd say the best setting for this would be turn V-Sync on, static resolution scale set to about 80%. Of course, we had to test out Cyberpunk 2077, where it's 720p low with FSR set to performance, and this little chip is trying its hardest to keep a steady 60. I also turned V-Sync on, I was hoping we could lock it there. And it's not doing a bad job, but there is one more setting that we can use. Actually, FSR Ultra Performance, it will run at a constant 60, but I just don't like the way it looks. Here's another one I always like to test, God of War, 720p low settings with FSR set to performance. So we can get an average of 41 FPS out of this game, and remember from the settings in this one, we actually do have a frame lock, so you can lock that right at 40 and play it like this all day. And the final game I wanted to test here was Spider-Man Remastered, newly released, 720p, low, FSR, performance, and with these little APUs, FSR is pretty magical because without it, we'd be really struggling even to hit 30 FPS, but with it set up like this, we can get an average of 44 FPS out of this game. And the final thing I wanted to take a look at in this video was total system power consumption and CPU temps. So when it comes to total system power consumption for this mini PC, at idle, pulls around 11 watts, while gaming, remember we've got that boost up to 35, this does pull 52 watts from the wall using a kilowatt meter, and the maximum that I could get this to pull was 68. Does come with a 65 watt power supply, but my kilowatt meter isn't, you know, 100% accurate. So while doing an extreme stress test, we're right on the edge of what that power supply can, you know, provide for the mini PC. But under everyday normal use and even gaming, we're not going to hit that limit, so you should be good to go. That was just an extreme use case scenario. Fan noise is minimal, but you can definitely hear it if it's sitting on your desk in front of you, especially while we're gaming. It does ramp up a bit. I mean, we don't have a lot of space to work with, and it does use a blower-style fan, so it's not a totally silent system, but it also doesn't sound like a jet engine, even while we're gaming. Average CPU temps here, idle, 40 degrees Celsius, 83 degrees Celsius, average gaming temps, and I was able to make this hit thermal throttle in Cinebench around 6 minutes into a 10-minute stress test, hitting 95, and that's the throttle limit there set in the BIOS. Normal use, you're not going to see those kind of temps. Now, if you want to stress out the GPU and CPU for a long period of time, of course, we can make this thing throttle. So overall, for what we have here, not a bad little performer, but you got to keep in mind that Ryzen 6000 mini PCs are on the market right now, which will up the performance on the GPU significantly. So if you don't mind spending a little more, I would definitely go with the 6000 series PC. But if you need something for light gaming, emulation, web browsing, email checking, document editing, then this would definitely get you by. That 5600U has more than enough power for those tasks. And we will see more of these Ryzen 5000 series mini PCs come down in price because, like I just mentioned, 6000 has hit the market. Some of those can get up there into the $800 price range, so it's really up to you. If you're not looking for top-of-the-line performance and you know what you're getting into with the 5600U, then this actually might be a good deal for a lot of people out there. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about the Nook Box 9, I'll leave some links in the description. And uh, if there's anything else you want to see on this, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.